So here we are. We're moving on to part three of our centipede game. You'll recall at the end of part two, we ended up with code that would allow us to move our player around and also move a centipede back and forth across the canvas. Uh, what we're going to do today is simply add some bullets to our game canvas. So we can control our player with our arrow keys and then fire bullets with the space bar. Now we haven't implemented collisions yet or we won't in part three. So you'll notice when I shoot these bullets, they go straight through the centipede. But that's our goal for today, to implement bullets, to bring those into our game. And we'll do that here on this canvas. Let me start by showing you our index file. Uh, remember, we're basing this on a game from a set of YouTube videos uh, by Shad Sluter. And we're adding one file to our project. That would be bullets.js. I've included the script tag here in line 24 to add that file to my project so that we can implement the bullets. And I've done a few coding tasks ahead of time. I've set up my bullets file with my comments and that will save us time in the video. We're going to introduce two objects. A bullet object itself, which is just one of those little dots uh, that showed up on the screen when I press spacebar. And then we're going to introduce a current bullets objects object, uh, which contains an array of all the bullets that we've fired. And this is where we're going to work uh, most of our code. Now, in the process, we'll make a few cha changes to game.js uh, and player.js. But the bulk of our coding is going to happen here in bullets.js. So let's start by just designing this bullet object. We're going to need a constructor function, and you pretty much know how that's going to go. Uh, we're going to call this a bullet, and it's going to receive a position x and y, and then a speed and a size. So pretty typical for the objects that are in our game. I will end this constructor down here. The properties are the parameters that we received. So this dot x is going to equal the x that we received. This dot y is going to equal the y that we received. And then, of course, speed and size. Oops. Typical Murphy typing in a video, not paying attention. Okay, so we've set up our parameters uh, and assigned those to the properties of our bullets. Now, let's just get the basic um, methods set up. So we're going to need to show ourselves. So that's going to be a function. It will not receive any parameters. And just like all of our other objects, we just want to be able to show ourselves on the canvas. Those bullets are just going to be gray ellipses, circles. So I don't want any stroke on these things. And the fill color that I chose was a simple gray, 176, 176, 176. You can obviously play with that. And there's my old typo again. Autocomplete. We're just filling. We're not doing any file stuff. Uh, and then we draw the ellipse. And of course, we're using p5.js to handle a lot of our drawing um, functions. So that ellipse is built into p5.js. Our coordinates are going to be this dot x and this dot y. And then since we're doing a circle, it's just a uh, height and width that are both equal to our size. That's all we need to do to draw ourselves. The other thing we want to be able to do is move. And bullets are pretty easy to move they move up the canvas. So essentially we're just going to be messing with the y value. In fact, we'll just subtract off the speed from the y value each time we call move. So this dot y is going to minus equals this dot speed. That'll move us up the canvas. And that's all there is for moving. And then like my other objects, I'm going to make a 
an update function which kind of handles the showing and the moving, or the moving and the showing, I guess we want to do it in that order. So we'll do this that move, to spell it right, and this that update. And this code is very similar to some other objects in our game. Uh, that's about all we need to do there. Oops, nope, I don't want to update there, I want show. You can't call yourself, so there we go. So that's what the update function will do. And there we have our bullet object. Now in our game, we're going to need a collection of these bullets, and I'm calling that a current bullets object. And so I'm going to set a constructor up for this. couldn't come up with a better name than that, so that's what I went with. I don't want to spend all day worrying about the names of our... I've got a random... Yep, I guess that looks okay. Um, I don't want to spend all day coming up with fancy names. It'll take me forever, so I just go with what I think and I move on. Okay, so this current bullets object is going to have one property, and that is an array of bullets that have been fired. So I called it this dot fired. Again, not real creative with my names, but there you go. So this fired array contains all of the bullets that we have sent off into the game. And of course, this object, this collection of bullets will need to be able to um, update itself. And what we'll do is simply run through, let's make that equal function. Uh, we'll run through the array and we'll just update those bullets. Okay, so for, I'm going to use the letter B to stand for what my current bullet number is, the index. And I'm just going to run through my array. Of course, right now my array has no bullets in it, but we will populate that throughout the gameplay. So this method is simply going to update all of the bullets that we have put into the game at this point. And we update each bullet individually, calling its bullet function. And that's about all that one needs to do. Now, one thing we do need to be able to do is add bullets to our current bullets object. And we're going to do this through a shoot method. Not shot, shoot. And this method is going to receive a couple of parameters. It's going to receive a position. may end up adjusting that later, but for now, when we introduce a bullet into the game, we're going to tell the position where the space bar was pushed. I'm going to start by creating a new bullet, and that bullet needs to receive a position, uh, a size, and a speed. And I just chose 5 and 5 for now. We may decide to adjust those later. This is not a function. Um, then what I do is I just push that bullet onto the onto the array. Okay. So we've gone through, and hopefully with no typos, uh, we'll, we've achieved creating a bullet object which represents a single bullet, and then we rep we created a current bullets object, which represents the array of bullets that we've introduced into the canvas. The ones that we've shot, basically, that we've fired. Now, so far we have no bullets in our game because we haven't told the game to display those bullets. So we've got to do a couple of things. We're going to go over to game. Uh, this is our file from part two. And we need to create a variable to represent our current bullets in our game. So I'm going to call this bullets with a lowercase b. And bullets is going to be our instance of the current bullets. So I did that up here in my global variables and then down in my setup function 
I'm going to make a new current bullets object along with my player and my centipede. So we'll say bullets equals new current bullets. And now I have a current bullets object, which is going to keep track of any bullets that we introduce into the game. Well, let's think about how bullets get put into the game. They get put into the game when a player presses the space bar. And we have some keyboard handling functions here in our this.move. So I'm just going to add this in there. And we'll do that right after we check the down arrow. Just to keep these all together, let's just put a little comment in here so we know why we're adding this. So this little code here is to fire a bullet with a space bar. If, and I happen to know that the spacebar code is 32, so if keys 32 is true, then what we want to do is introduce, <laughs> introduce a new bullet into the game. And we do that by calling the shoot method of our current bullets object, which is just bullets. So we're going to do bullets.shoot, shoot. shoot and we'll send it the location of our player so that that bullet gets fired off where the player pressed the key. Okay. And actually, I want to move this after the constraint because for some reason, if we had moved ourselves to the wrong place, it's going to make an adjustment. And I don't want our bullets to be off the screen. So let's put it here. It's probably a better plan. Okay, so we're moving our player around. If the player happens to hit the space bar, we're going to shoot the bullet. Um, starting at the location where the player had pressed the space bar. All right, last thing we need to do is include the bullets as part of our game playing scene. So we update our centipede. Let's go ahead and update our bullets in here too. I'm just checking to see where I put this. Ah, yeah, let's just put it right here. Okay, so we'll update our centipede, we'll update our bullets, and we'll update our player. Okay. Let's start with that and see what happens. So I'm going to switch over to our video. I'm going to refresh this and here I can see I can move my guy around. Let's press the space bar and see what happens. Holy smokes. I can hold, even if I just tap the space bar a little bit, a bunch of bullets come out. So we, <laughs> I'm just going to play around with this for a minute. So this is the right idea, but it's not very practical for our game. Essentially our computer is too fast and our bullets are coming out too fast. So what we're going to do is introduce a little bit of a delay uh, so that the player can't fire off a string of bullets like this. The other thing that we need to do is remember that just because those bullets went off the screen doesn't mean they don't exist. So my bullets array right now is very long because I've never taken care of the bullets that went off the screen. So those are two things that I need to deal with right now. Let's start by dealing with those bullets that fly off the screen. Once they're off the screen, we don't need them in our game anymore. And so the way I'm going to deal with that is I'm going to introduce a method called check expired. In my mind, uh, a bullet expires if it goes off the screen. So I'm going to add this method to my current bullets object. Whatever I'm doing here is making the fan on my computer really loud, so I hope that doesn't affect the video too much. I don't want to have to make this thing again because I'm lazy. Okay, uh, this dot check expired, and what we're going to do is run through all of our bullets and see if they're still on the, on the canvas. So, I mean, for loop. We 
we run through the entire length of our fired array. And we check to see if we're off the screen. So if this.fired bracket B, the current bullet that we're checking, that's a B, not a D. If that guy, if the Y value is less than zero, then we want to essentially expire this bullet. In other words, we want to take it out of the array. And the way we do that is with a splice. So the splice method of our array, uh, we're going to splice the position that we are working on, and we only want one taken away, so that's how we call that function. This dot splice parentheses B for the bullet that we're taking off and the single bullet that we're removing. That removes that from our array and it shortens the length of the array. Okay, so that will take care of that. The other thing that we need to do is introduce some sort of delay situation. So I'm going to go into my game function and I'm going to introduce a couple of new constants and variables. I'm going to introduce something called reset delay. And this is going to be a constant. So reset delay is just going to be the amount, uh, the number of cycles that I want to occur before I'm allowed to shoot another bullet. And then from that constant, I'm going to define a variable, which is the counter to let us know which cycle we're on. So I'm going to call that bullet delay. And I will reset bullet delay back to the reset delay every time I press the space bar. So it's going to start out at the value of reset display, which right now is 40, but if we ever decide we want to change it, then we only have to change it in one place. Just got to spell this right. Reset delay. Okay. And then here's how we're going to achieve this little delay here. Every time the player presses space bar. Uh, we want to check and make sure that the delay is at least zero, at most zero, so less than zero. So I'm going to add that into my if here. So I'm not going to allow the player to shoot a bullet until I've counted down from 40 past zero. So let's put in an extra part of our condition here, which is bullet delay is less than zero. Okay. Now, how are we going to count down the bullet delay? In our game function, in our game playing function, game playing scene, we're going to add a countdown. We're going to subtract one from bullet delay every time we want run through here. So at the end of all this, we've, we've gone through a cycle, we've displayed all of our objects, then all I want to do is subtract one from bullet delay. So we'll do a minus minus on that. And I think that should get us what we want. Okay, so let me just show you real quick what we've done. I've introduced a counter, essentially, called bullet delay to keep track of how long it's been since we last fired a bullet. And each time we fire a bullet, we want to set it back to bullet delay. So I didn't do that yet. Let's go back to player. If we do happen to shoot a bullet, we want to reset the counter. And... Where did I do that? Ah, I did that in the bullet object. So anytime we call shoot, we're going to reset that. So I could do it in the player, or I could just do it here. I'm going to do it here. Anytime we add a bullet to our array, we are going to... Nope, not resize observer, reset delay. Okay, 
any time we fire a bullet, which means we add it to the array, we are going to reset the delay and not allow another one to be fired until that delay is less than or equal, less than zero. And that should take care of our situation. All right, let's go and see. We'll refresh here and see how my shooting is doing now. So here we go. We've got our character. It still moves. And now if I hold down the space bar, see how we've spread that out a little so the player can't fire a constant stream. And the other thing I believe that we've done is we've kept our number of bullets. Um, we haven't continued to add bullets. Once they've gone off the screen, we've subtracted them. And here's how we're going to check that. Let's just add a little console.log here to check the size of our, um, of our array. So anytime I splice, I just want to check the size of the array. I'll end up removing this. But this is just for us to see. if the bullets are going off the screen and being subtracted. Right. So we'll refresh one more time here. Uh, I need to get the console up. There it is. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a second, but let's just fire a few bullets here. Right now, let's see, I get the most I can get right now is about three on the screen. Let's see if I can get more. Let's see if I can get okay, so there's four bullets on the screen. And then if we go back and check that console, it should show it showed nothing. Hmm. That is unfortunate. Let's do this again. Nothing like crashing and burning uh, on the video. It's not showing anything. Did I not save? Check expired. I forgot to tell it to check expired. Ooh, interesting. All right. So I'm glad I did that because in um, somewhere around here, I have to check for expire. I think I did that here. Why? Ah, here it is. So every time I update the bullets, I should check and see if they're expired, right? So I'm going to do that right here in my update function. If they're expired, I want to take them off. So I'm going to do that first and then update everything. So, sorry about that. Of course, anything to make the video as long as possible. Here we go, I'm firing some bullets, and at most I had four on the screen, and now I'm back to zero. So let's see what the console shows. Yep, uh, length three, two, one, and zero there. So, that's good news, because we don't want to just fire off a bunch of bullets and never remove those from the system. We suck up a lot of memory doing that. All right, so just to be clear, we started with just a centipede and a player object that we can move around. We've now introduced bullets into the situation that we can fire at certain intervals. Right now we've set that at 40 cycles, but we may decide to adjust that after we get all the game pieces in and see how the game actually plays. And once the bullets move off the screen, they are taken out of the game so that we can add new objects to the game and not waste in those. All right. Most of our code we added to the bullets.js file where we introduced both a bullet object and a current bullets object. The current bullets object includes code for checking to see if those are off the screen and also showing itself and adding those to the array. And then the only thing we did to player is we added this code code that would check for a space bar and if we did press the space bar we would shoot the bullet and then finally we made a few adjustments to game.js we put in the reset delay and the bullet delay and then we also added our bullets object 
to the game and updated those in the game playing scene. So not quite as difficult as in implementing the centipede uh, to get the bullets working, but that's the code for that. Uh, we'll end this here for part three. The video is already long enough because of the few little glitches I ran into. But good luck getting this part of your game working. And then the next big thing we'll have to do is introduce collisions to our game. First, we want to check to see if the bullet hits the centipede. And then we also want to see if the centipede ever hits the player. So those are things that we're going to introduce here in the future. Until then, take care.